So today I'm going to be attempting to replace my cassette player on my Commodore 64. Now I'm not replacing it with another cassette player, I'm going to replace it with a tap we know. Now someone suggested to me, Adrian Black from Adrian Black's Digital Basement, that I should get myself an SD to IEC board and that is sort of simulates a, um, a disk drive but I don't want to do that because they're like 40 quid. So found that you can actually make something called a tap we know. There's a brilliant blog on it. I'm going to share that with you and we're going to try and make one. Essentially it emulates the tape drive and so you can feed in tape files with an SD card. So hopefully we can do that today. So this is what we're going to be building, the Tapuino uh, by 1337beef. Uh, but it's actually sweet little MRE. Slip I bet that's Sweet Little Mystery. Maybe. That's a song, actually, by Wet Wet Wet. I don't know if you know it. Anyway, this post um, is from March 16th, 2015, so it's been around a while. I bet there's loads of different versions of this, but this is sort of the first one I came across, so it's the one I'm going to use. And it looks pretty simple. So we've got the major components here, Arduino Nano, uh, an LCD display. We might be able to use a different one. I'm not sure if I've got one of these. I had one in a project a while back. What was it? It was like a Pi bot who calculated Pi. I don't know if I've still got it around. And SD card. Yep. Uh, 40 wire DuPont cable. I'm sure I've got loads of wire around. Additional. This background is really annoying. Hang on. Hacks. Uh, additional components. Piece of Vera board. We might be doing this on a breadboard actually. And um, we'll look at maybe doing a PCB later on. Uh, dip socket. Yeah. Well, no, we probably don't. We might have some female um, headers actually. Ah, it says or two times 15 female headers. Yeah, we probably do. But we're going to do it in a breadboard so we won't need those. Uh, dip socket for the optocoupler. Okay, that's down here. So mail pin. Okay, so lots of these things are because you're putting it in a Vera board, but I'm not going to. 430 ohm resistor. I've got a 470. Hopefully that's good enough. Four tactile switches. Probably got something I can use there. And a 4N25 optocoupler. Now, a while back, I had intended on building something to... Uh, and what was it doing? It was something like zero crossing detection for mains power supplies or something like that. Well, I wanted to control a an, a light and have it dim. So I bought some optocouplers for that, but I don't know which ones they are. We'll have a look. And some jump wire. And it, this this page is really detailed. So look, look, the whole wiring diagram here. So it's going to be really useful. I'll put a link to the to this page in the description. Now it goes into the Vera board stuff. I'm not worried about that for now. I'm just going to be working on this breadboard schematic, I think. And before you assemble, don't need to worry about this. I'm looking for the software now. Wow, this is really detailed. It's great. It mentions a 440 ohm resistor here. Wasn't it 430? So maybe that's a typo. And oh yeah, of course we need a CN2 connector. So I have, this is the Commodore cassette connector. I do have one of those somewhere because I intended on making this years ago. I've missed the link to the software. Hang on. Where is it? I'm sure it was on this page. Oh God, it was right at the top. So it's on his uh, GitHub. There we go. So this whole thing here, that's quite a lot. Okay. Well, let's sort the hardware out first and then we'll worry about this bit later on. Right, components. So displays first. Um, do we have an I squared C? 1602 in here. 
doesn't look like it. Oh, but there's one of those 1306s. Oh, it's a bit of an odd shaped one. There we go. One of those will do. Anything else in here we need? My, not microcontroller. What we're looking for? A SD card reader. No. So next up, there's one. One of uh, those. That's a micro SD. We could use a bigger one. I've got some small SD cards. Ah, there's the Badger. So that's a 1602 I squared C display. Next, we need the Commodore cassette port connector, which I left in here years ago, never used. So we make use of that and buttons. We need four and that will do just fine. I thought I was gonna to have to hook up a load of these. Actually, I could have used these ones. These are nice, these have got little rubber buttons on the top, but we use just this board, makes it easier. Oh, and while we're in here, we can, uh... oh no, we don't need female headers because we're, we're doing it on a breadboard first, but I have got these for sort of doing it on a Vera board later on. I've also got these, let's, uh focus on that a little. Does it say the, it says uh, 4N27. So these are opto couplers. They're not the same as where required, but I've looked at the data sheet. They look fairly similar. So hopefully these will work. I bought them ages ago now. It's all fading. <laughs> right, now we've got most of our components together. In fact, we don't need this little display anymore. We do need a breadboard. So we're gonna tear apart whatever this was. Uh, I think this was a little timer I see thing that I was playing with. And we'll start putting it together. We need to quickly solder some pins onto this button I see. So it's just a little breakout board for these buttons, which is nice. So let's do that rather quickly. Hopefully that's the last time we're going to need the soldering iron with this project. So this is our LCD. It's got a little backpack on it. I did, I used this a long time ago. So I bought one with um, headers already on it. I don't know if you can see that very well, but, and so I had to solder this thing without headers on, with headers on, not headers, pins, uh, solder it to the other pins. Um, so it makes for a really <laughs> janky setup, but it will work hopefully. I mean, it's not been used in a long time, but we've got our connections on there. so. So this uses I squared C and then we've got our SD card board and that uses SPI. Ice cream van break. Right, so let's just start getting stuff wired up. So we'll do the sensible stuff first. So that's power and ground. There's one jumper there and one for power, which is just there. My SD card module has a voltage regulator already on it. So make sure, sure that yours does. It also has, looks like it has a voltage level translation there. Now, what else? Um, we've also got this. Now I've put it on one of these DuPont cables with a female and male end. So this can just be <laughs> flapping in the breeze as someone would say. Um, I'm not too worried at the moment because this is just, just to test it. You know, it's on, I'm sure loads of people have done this before, but I've never done it. So let's get the opto coupler in. Whoops, a daisy. I don't need all of those. We'll put those to the side for now. Pin one marker is where our resistor goes to power. So we'll jump her across the power rails and we'll do this exactly the same way. Let's just trim this down. There we go. And then ground as well. Now for the display. Now we've got everything else <laughs> jankily held together. 
we need to get our display attached. So let's figure out what we're doing here. We've got another set of these DuPont leads. This isn't going to work very well with a Vera board. So I think what I'll do is look at using that little um, SSD 1306 or SD 1306 display instead in future. But we'll just go with the base example for now, which was using that 1602 display, which what are the I squared C pins? <laughs> I can't remember. A4 and A5. SDA is A4. Oh, it is getting messy. A4 and A5. Okay, so, God, look at this. Well, I would have to do one of these from start to finish things, wouldn't I? Great. Okay, so now all, the, all that's left to do is stick some wires on this. I'm going to have to look up the pinout and see what we're doing with this. Well, here's the pinout for the cassette port and got one A. Okay, so I'm going to assume we're reading it like we're looking at the back of the port there. Uh, the cassette port 12 pin edge connector, six pins are on each side, top and down. The opponent contacts are connected with each other. A with one, B with two and so on. Okay, so it doesn't, okay, brilliant. So we've got uh, A-1 is ground, five volts motor, and they're both connected together. So it doesn't matter which one we sort of solder onto. Well, we're not soldering onto the, the actual edge connector. Well, I think I said that I didn't think I'd use the soldering eye again, but I kind of forgot about this. So let's get some wire soldered onto here. I'm gonna use this, it's really lovely flexible like silicon stuff. So I'm gonna strip off, strip off some of this and we'll solder it on. Right, I've cut a bunch of wires, all roughly the same length, twizzled the ends. I haven't tinned them yet, but um, we're going to want to secure this while we solder it. So I think I'm just going to use one of these little clamps and clamp it to the edge of this breadboard. And I hope that I don't mess everything up. Oh, that'll do. Okay, let's start soldering some wires. All soldered, that's good. Nice floppy wires so that I can bend this around when I'm putting this behind my Commodore 64. Now, all of these wires are absolutely not the same length, it turns out. Uh, that's okay, they're really flexible, so it's not really a problem. But now we need to solder up these pins onto the wires. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six there. And that's because they're coming over here actually. So they're gonna plop over here and then one's not connected. And then over here, we've got one for power and ground and one also for like the cassette power. So the five volt from the Commodore 64 is gonna be powering this whole circuit. So we've gotta be sure not to plug this into the computer at the same time as the Commodore 64. It could be bad. In fact, I think I remember there being a very stark warning <laughs> on the website. Right, that's everything soldered together and hooked on um, exactly as it is in the diagram. But I'm a little confused because on here, I've connected everything up as per the, uh, the C64 pinout for the, the cassette port. But we've got a couple of lines here, purple and brown. So these two here which aren't connected because they don't exist on this thing. Control zero and control one. So we're gonna to have to head back to the computer and see what I've missed. This definitely says control zero and control one. And on the pinout for the C64 cassette port, there isn't anything there. There are only six connections. So I need to reread this and find out what it is I've missed like an idiot. The astute reader will note that the bus connector has two additional pins that are not connected. So I didn't read it properly. What an idiot. Um, so they're used in the MUX board, a multiplexing board to allow switching between the C64 and the real data set as a target device. This will be covered in a future blog. 
Okay. I can't believe I missed this. Well, I, I guess that sort of explains it. I'm just didn't read properly. So everything's connected now and it should be complete. We just need to get an SD card for this thing. So there's probably one in here. This is a two gig micro SD. So that will be fine. I've got so many old, <laughs> old flash things in here. We've got it plugged in and this is the software. So I don't really know if there's any configuration here. I couldn't see anything in the documentation, but we may be wrong and I'll have to look it up. So I'm just going to check my details. Nano, old bootloader. I think it's probably the old bootloader. COM14, AVR, ISP, upload. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, there is a config thing. Okay. Let's try and figure this out. Ah, uh, here we go. So we've got config.h.example. So let's just open that and get rid of that and that. Okay, so this makes sense. I, I knew that you could use a couple of different displays. I didn't know how you tell it to use whichever one. So we're going to be using this 1602. Oh, I don't know the I squared C address. We're going to assume it's that. And language is English. Let's try that again. There we go. Low memory available. And it's finished uploading. And we've got a display. Great. I don't know if you can really see that. Initialization failed. That could mean I have not connected this very well. Just reset that. Initialization failed. I wonder if it's looking for the Commodore 64. It may well be. But I'll just double check my wiring on the SD card. Well, that was 10 minutes wasted. Uh, so it was nothing wrong with the SD card or my wire. Well, it was something wrong with the wiring. But so I reformatted the SD card to be FAT32. I'd done it as FAT. Um, that's not an issue. What is an issue is forgetting to jumper the ground across. So um, let's do that, shall we? <laughs> there we go. Flip. Right, so I think um, I just need to make sure that ground is connected over here. So I'll just throw another jumper on because there's a split in the breadboard. So we'll just pop ground over. And then that needs to go over there. And then I think we're good to go. Um, that is actually probably not connected to this side of ground either. So I'll fiddle around with this and then we'll plug it into the C64. <laughs> That's a scary thought. I will just take ground from over here. Okay, we're about ready to fire this up. Now, I've got the Commodore 64 going into my PC, into a little capture device. So let's see if that's working. We should see it on screen here, but I'm capturing as well. So I'll show you that. Right, it's time to plug in the device. So I'll flip back to the video. So we don't need our cassette tape anymore. Well, we do need it, but not right now. And then we'll plug this in. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to sit this now because the Wires are a little bit short, so I'll just plug it in and see where we get to. Oh, I'll turn it off first. Just in case I've made a mistake. Now, you can probably see that display, so we're just going to turn it on, 
So we're ready to turn it off really quickly if anything goes wrong. Okay, that didn't work. Something went wrong. I don't know what. We're going to unplug the cassette and see what's happened. C64 works fine. I've done something wrong. I'm going to check it out. Right, I figured out what the problem was. Um, I may have reversed <laughs> power and ground, of course. So you can see it's working. Hopefully that's in focus, I'm not sure. But I'm capturing the screen as well, so you'll be able to see that there. So let's load something up. And right, if I remember the buttons, this was select, abort, next and previous. So select play, next. So you've got old favorites from when I was a kid in here. So we're gonna go with, actually we'll go with circuit ref because this is the one that I've written. Oh crap, abort. I forgot to press, I've got to type in load first. Select. Now it should load it up. And this is kind of cool. I think it's actually working. So, the, and it's all thanks to that sweet little mystery guy online. So, oh, it's found something. Let's go. So if, if you guys want to check that out, I'll pop a link in the description, but it was really well documented. So even an idiot like me could figure it out. And of course I made mistakes along the way. Um, and we're using a sort of scrub lord breadboard <laughs> layout for the whole thing. But what else do you expect from me? Right, we're almost there. 86, 87, 89, 95%. And it seems to have stopped at 95. I wonder why. Uh, it works though. This is brilliant. So yeah, so this is part of a tutorial I'm doing about using a serial interface with the Commodore 64 and a PC. Um, I've learned a few things along the way. Um, things I wish I had learned in 2016 or 2013 when I originally did a video on interfacing this Commodore 64 with a PC or with Arduino. So that seems to be working. I won't go into this anymore because I'm sort of making a video about it. So let's restart this and load up a game, shall we? Should we go with Ghostbusters? I think so. Load. And then we'll select play. And then we want to go to Ghostbusters. Obviously a backup of a tape that I already have. <laughs> and I remember this taking a long time when I was a kid. So I used to play Commodore 60. In fact, we started off with a VIC-20 in our house. If you ignore that, like the ping pong game thing you used to get on the TV. But we had a VIC-20 was our sort of first, it's really the first computer. And we used to have games on that, it was great. There was um, Wheeling Wally was a cartridge game I think we had. I think it was Centipede as well, or something like that. And then a couple of years later, we got Commodore 64 and it was the best thing ever. We didn't really have an arcade near where we lived, but me and my older brother um, would play it non-stop. Oh my word, this is amazing. Ghostbusters by Activision. Do I need to press anything? Sort of says loading 21%. Oh, it's going. So yeah, we used to play games on it all the time. And we probably had it a lot later than most people really. It was well into the 90s that we were playing on the Commodore 64. Our next console or computer after that would have been some, Amst like my dad's Amstrad PCW8256. And I think we had a Commodore PC at one point. But yeah, we played on the, the Commodore 64 for a long time. It was brilliant. There were games like Ghostbusters. My favorite game that I hadn't been able to locate was Spy Hunter. I absolutely loved the music on that. And when you had to drive in the back of this lorry thing. Um, but <laughs> I mean, I'm sort of getting, getting into the gaming bit now, but really what I wanted to do with this was stop using the tape player and transfer files I've written over to the SD card so that I can load them that way. But this is cool. I remember spending what felt like hours staring at the screen doing the loading thing and you never knew if it was going to not work or not. 
because the, the tape players aren't really that reliable. So sometimes it would just break halfway through or start eating that tape and you'd hear that crunch, crunch, crunch sound coming from the tape player. And then you'd have to sort of wind it up again and hope it didn't do it again next time. We didn't know anything about how to like clean the tape wheels and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, it was just left to us kids after my dad wasn't using it anymore. So then my parents used to play text adventures on the Commodore 64, like late into the night. I remember coming down one night and they were playing like this text adventure. I don't, I don't know what it was called. It was probably got like Zork or something, but it was all just text on the screen, no pictures or anything. So uh, they were like trying to figure out what to do next and stuff. That was like the height of entertainment, I guess, at the time. Well, we're at 99, 99%, so we're almost there. Still at 99. Are you going to be done? I mean, this isn't really part of the video, is it? Uh, I think it's failed. No, it hasn't. Oh my God. <laughs> Here it is. I don't know if there's any audio because I can't hear it. I can see that there's audio coming in. I can see the signal on the display over there. And, oh, also my microphone's coming through on OBS. So I don't need this. Wow, okay. So I remember if you pressed spacebar, it would say Ghostbusters. I wonder if that's right. Is that right? Because I can't, I can't tell. Or maybe not. I've got a joystick here, so let's see if... Oh, I press F1 or F3 to start. Oh man, this brings back memories. So I remember this having like a... sound, but I don't know if it does. Oh God, this is where we put our name in. Yes. So f last name. Do you have it? Oh, this is like a saved game thing, I think. I'm just gonna put no. In that case, welcome to your new business. I don't think it saved your game. I think it stored it as like a number and that corresponded to how much money you had, what car you had, all that kind of thing. I bet there's a way to cheese that. So now we get to select a car. Press spacebar to view car options. Press one, two, or three, or one, two, three, or four to purchase the car. Press spacebar. Press return after you choose. Okay, so what if I press one? Spacebar, return. <laughs> okay. Press spacebar to view car options. Well, spacebar does nothing. Two. Okay, so we're just looking at the cars. I'm gonna purchase the car. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Two or three to purchase car. What that? I don't know what I'm going to press here. I'm going to go with two. Okay, I don't know quite how that worked, but now we get to use the joystick. Oh, do we want that? No. Uh, we want a marshmallow sensor, an image intensifier, a PK energy detector, oh. Type two for more choices. Traps. We need traps. Three traps. A ghost vacuum. Ghost bait. Oh, I think we might have spent all our money. We have. Okay. E to end. <laughs> oh, look at this. Oh. So we've got to go in here and capture 
a ghost. The PK energy is going up. I wonder if this is probably. Da, 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 da. I don't know what the music sounds like. Oh, next time I'm going to make sure it outputs. Okay, so now as I remember it, we've got to pop a trap down, pop our guys down. Uh oh. And then we've got to push him in. Oh no. Oh God, I crossed the streams and killed myself. We should have just waited. Uh oh. Some ghosts are coming. I don't really know what I'm doing, really. I think you just sort of. Oh, there's another ghost. Backup men are all out. Oh, we have to go back. Well, we'll leave it there. Now, oh, do you know what? I might play another game. Um, if you want to stick around and have a look at a different game, then stay. But if not, you don't need to. Uh, all of the information is available on Mr. What was it? Sweet Little Mysteries blog. I'll put a link in the description. Super great little tutorial. Easy to, <laughs> easy to follow. It is easy to follow if you're clever. Um, but if you're like me, you'll have a few problems, but nothing too major. And as long as you take your time, you can figure those problems out before you blow up your 64. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to do. And with really super simple components, like ones that a lot of us just have lying around. So well worth giving it a go. And honestly, it's a time saver because this tape player, not great, not great at all anymore. It squeals and squeaks and it chewed the tape twice, so not ideal. And they're just not so reliable. Um, so yeah, very cool little project. And thanks to Adrian Black for giving me a push to do something. He told me to get one of those SD to IEC things, which is an SD card to, I think it's the disk drive port. But um, they're a bit expensive and actually you can make one of these for like five quid really, so well worth a go. All right, thanks for watching. And if you're hanging around, I'm going to play Kickstart 2 for a little bit. There we go. So Kickstart 2 is a game, it's like dirt biking, but you're trying to go over all these different obstacles. It also had a track designer that I remember me and my brother used to play a lot on. Like it was absolutely brilliant. I remember the sound being really awesome and hopefully that will come across. I have no idea what it's going to sound like. So this might take some time. So in the meantime, I guess I should tell you about um, sort of a, maybe a little bit more about why I put this thing together. Well, the tape player is not super reliable. But also, if I'm going to write programs for the C64, then is it easier to do it on the computer or on this terrible keyboard? Well, it's not a terrible keyboard, but it's a little mushy and there's no syntax highlighting on Commodore Basic. You know, it's not, there's no auto line numbering or renumbering unless you've got a different um, ROM in there. But there's a program called CBM PRG Studio. And um, so I've been using that to write my software. And then because I had no way of getting it onto the C64, although I recently, oops, recently found a way using this. Oh my gosh. I have not seen that for, pff, I don't even know how long. All right, 20 years maybe? Gosh, 1987. It was probably not far off after it came out, honestly, but one of these, which is sort of like a cassette adapter for a car, usually. Um, and so you could plug your CD player in, your portable CD player. Well, um, I tried this and it wasn't super reliable. And, you know, you had to sort of, you had to 
contend with the volume coming from your phone or from the PC. There's, a, there's an app you can get called uh, Tap Dance. Let's see if I've got it on my phone. Yeah, there we are. Loading Tap Dancer. Okay, thanks. So it looks like that. And so you can load tap files, tape files, onto your phone, play them through the 3.5 millimeter jack if you're lucky enough to have one. And I don't know if you can hear me because there might be so much noise coming from this damn thing because I can see it on there. But uh, And so I tried loading my programs on with that, but it was really unreliable. So I didn't and I had to type them out, which if you've done that before, you will realize that it's so easy to make mistakes. So when I was, even when I was copying stuff from a magazine and it was like really well written, um, it was difficult to do when I was a kid. And well, I suppose I was an idiot when I was a kid, but copying it from that screen onto the Commodore 64 takes ages and it's easy to like put in the wrong keystroke or whatever, and then your whole thing doesn't work. It's easy enough to go back and iteratively go through and make sure you got everything right. But when your line is longer than the screen, then it becomes a little bit of an issue. Wow, this game is taking a long time to load. Still, well, should I just show you that? I will do while, I'm, while we're doing this. So my Commodore 64 came in a box of lots of things. So I got the box for the old tape player, but it came with Mind Benders, which includes Trivial Pursuit, Snare, Confusion, and Split Personalities. So you can have a look there. And it also came with Night Moves. So on that was Nightbreed, Sly Spy, Shadow Warriors, and Midnight Resistance. Now. I didn't get this when I was a kid. I bought it in like 2013 for the sole purpose of interfacing it with an Arduino because I've got a lot of sort of retro feelings for this. Retro? That's the wrong word. I can't remember what the right one is. Um, I've also got this golf game that I remember playing, or my dad playing, I think. And it came in oh, this box, The Night Moves set. Which way am I going with it? That way. But on the back, it says Mind Benders. So basically it was a whole pack, two joysticks, not the right joysticks, mind. One of the right ones, I think. So the Cheetah Exterminator and this one. Are they both the same? No, they're different different joysticks, but they're pretty cool. So we're on 95% now, so it should be finished any minute. Any minute, could be any 10 minutes from now. It takes a while after it's finished, I think. I can't believe it's working. I wish I could hear the audio. Oh my lord, I do not remember what to do here. What? Random, Z, random, or AX for courses. Players one. I just pressed, oh god, I don't remember how to play. Oh, I've already fallen off. <laughs> oh, I remember. Okay, I don't remember. Oh, you control the speed with forward and back. So we can probably go a bit faster here. Oh! And you have to go over a certain speed for some of these things. Oh, flip. I need to keep the wheel up but it does cheat you a lot. <laughs> the computer's fallen off. Oh, flip, I have now. 
Is it going to cheat me past the ramp? I didn't really want it to do that because I wanted to demo the ramp. I think you can only go on one on this bit. Let's just speed up. Is the computer finished? Or is that... Oh, for heaven's sake. It's just going to cheat me there, isn't it? <laughs> okay, we're doing it again. Oh, it's a one on that one as well, isn't it? So you go slowly over this bit and then we can speed up. And then we've got to slow down again here. Ooh. Oh, flip. Oh, it's made me miss the jump now as well. Oh, you can go two over those. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> oh no! Oh. Wow. I think I beat my last time, right? That's the end. I'm not doing any more. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the sound came out and it wasn't too awful. And um, I'll see you all next time. It actually worked though. <laughs>